Watch the original saga. With the upcoming God of War for PS4, we see series protagonist Kratos taking on a new mythological foe. So we here at Suggestive Gaming figured now would be a good time to go over Kratos' first set of opposition, the Greek Pantheon. So strap yourself in because this is what you need to know about the entire original God of War saga. Are they related at all? Like, is there any connection between the God of War who dealt with the Greek gods and the God of War who's currently dealing with the, the Norse? Norse gods? Is that right? Is that the term I should use? Norse? Kratos is in them both. Oh, interesting. <laughs> All right, let's look. Let's watch it then. I'm down. From start to... It's only 20 minutes. And, and I'm probably going to skip the comic book portions. I feel like I only care about the games. Do I need the comic book part? I don't feel like I want to finish. Our story begins with the Primordials, the very first beings to come into existence, fighting for control of their creation, Earth. This war ravished the world, and eventually the three Furies were born from the rage and power of the battle. The Furies were then tasked to honor oaths between the various beings of Earth. Their first victim was the Hecatoncheres, Aegeon, who had broken an oath to one of the first gods, Zeus. To make an example of Aegeon, the Furies petrify his body into the prison of the damned for anyone who dared to break an oath in the future. Eventually, the Furies began to take guidance from the god of war Ares who convinced them to join him in a siege on Olympus. Believing their forces to be too weak, the queen of the Furies, Electo, birthed a son with Ares hoping to create a powerful warrior. This warrior, Orcos, proved to be a failure in Ares' eyes and was disowned. However, the Furies decided to use him as their oath keeper. With Ares still in search for his warrior to help take over Olympus, Zeus hears of a prophecy foretelling his death at the hands of one of his sons, a marked warrior. Ares is then tasked to find and dispose of this threat. Ares discovers Deimos, a young Spartan who bore a birthmark all over his body and storms the city to capture him. During the kidnapping, Deimos' brother, another young Spartan by the name of Kratos, attempts to stop the god, but he is struck down, leaving a scar- Bro, holy shit. That felt like what lectures felt like in high school. I, it felt like learning about the Troy War and trying to read a recap of the Iliad God damn! Scar over his right eye. Ares attempts to kill Kratos to- Alright, back that shit up. Back that shit up. People make the world. They fight. Doesn't go great. For some reason, outspawn the Furies from that. The Furies are like little god makers. They work with dealing all the gods. One guy was out of pocket, they put him in prison. Because Zeus, he betrayed Zeus. At, at some point, the Furies are like, we're going to team up, up with Ares and take over Mount Olympus? Fuck! Is that not it? I feel like that was it. Why? Okay. But here's here's confusing. Dies and was disowned. However, power even by who had broken an oath between the three Furies were born from the rage and power of the battle. I'm focused. The Furies were then tasked to honor oaths between the various beings of Earth. Their first victim honor was the Hecatoncheres, Aegeon, who had broken an oath to one of the first gods, Zeus. To make an example of Aegeon, the Furies petrify his body into the prison of the damned for anyone who dared to break an oath in the future. Eventually, the Furies began to take guidance from the god of war, Ares, who convinced them to join him in a siege on Olympus. Okay, so they are oath honorers. And then part-time, they're also siegers. So they're honoring oaths. And they're like, hey, everybody, like, you said you would do it. So, like, you really have to do it. You said you would do it. And then and then they're like, but we also do a bit of sieging. And they try to siege. Believing their forces to be too weak, the queen of the Furies, Electo, birthed a son with Ares, hoping to create a powerful warrior. Feel like she got gaslit by Ares. Feel, I'm just going to say it. I feel like that's a toxic relationship. And Ares is like, <laughs> maybe if we... Fucked. Like we could be actually siege. <laughs> um. <laughs> Seems a little weird. This warrior, Orcos, proved to be a failure in Ares' eyes and was disowned. However, the fear. Oh, that kid's not gonna work. We have to fucking make a new one. Orcos just isn't gonna do. We <laughs> decided to use him as their oath keeper. With Ares still in search for his warrior. To oath keeper because their job is to make people keep oaths so they're just pushing the job onto their kid respect to help take over olympus zeus hears of a prophecy for telling his death at the hands of one of his sons a marked warrior Ares is then tasked to find and dispose of this threat Ares discovers daemon okay that's confusing that's confusing this feels like zeus is not operating off the information that i am help take over olympus zeus hears of so Ares is looking for the warrior that's going to take over olympus 
how the fuck did Zeus hear that someone's going to take over Olympus, but didn't hear that Ares is trying to siege it? Like, that feels like, like he heard a prophecy about someone years from now who's going to take over Mount Olympus, but he didn't hear Ares was trying to do that, like, fucking five days ago with the Furies? He missed that? That's weird. That's just weird. I'm sorry, that's weird. Of a prophecy foretelling his death at the hands of one of his sons, a marked warrior. And so what, Ares is like, uh, yeah. Huh. What a weird prophecy. That's gotta be concerning. Okay. Stop pausing. I literally cannot understand it unless I pause and talk like this. I tried, and I got to this exact point, and I understood nothing. This is the website. I wake up every- Oh, that's me. Ares is then tasked to find and dispose of this threat. Ares discovers Deimos, a young Spartan who bore a birthmark all over his body and storms the city to capture him. During the kidnapping, Deimos' brother, another young Spartan by the name of Kratos, attempts to stop the god, but he is struck down, leaving a scar over his right eye. It's like, that's so Raven. Ares attempts to kill Kratos for this, but his sister, Athena, the goddess of war, convinces him to spare the boy. Deimos is then taken to the god of death, Thanatos, to prevent the prophecy and protect Zeus. Kratos, tortured by his inability to save his brother, vows to never fail like that again and tattoos a replica of Deimos' birthmark on himself in remembrance. Kratos' rage and pain remained with him as he became a leading member of the Spartan army, eventually marrying a Spartan woman named Lysandra, and the two have a daughter whom they name Calliope. Okay, certainly though, if you are someone who tattooed yourself with the mark that the gods really don't like, so they even went as far as to go raid cities and villages and take children with marks on them, they would find you, right? Like, I feel like you don't get to become a known Spartan. And then they'd be like, oh, like, how do they hear about this kid having a mark, but they didn't hear about the Spartan with a mark? Calliope unfortunately contracts a plague, which infects her skin and causes the Spartan authorities to decide for her to be thrown into a chasm and left to die. What? What? Did we miss a step? Did they go to the doctor first? I feel like we missed a... More American healthcare than we are European here, huh? Kratos then sets off to find the cure for her disease, a mysterious element with the exceptional healing abilities called Ambrosia. Unbeknownst to Kratos, that's the just the drink of the gods. The gods drink Ambrosia. The gods had a wager in which they selected various heroes whom they believed would be the first to obtain the Ambrosia. Kratos was chosen by Ares, likely due to their prior run in in which Kratos displayed his resilience and bravery. After battling the other gods' selected heroes, Kratos fights a climactic battle with an army of barbarians and their leader Ulrich, who was trying to retrieve the Ambrosia to heal his own father. Kratos eventually bests Ulrich and captures the Ambrosia, but at the cost of many of his men. Upon returning to Sparta, Kratos heals his daughter, and the king of Sparta bestows on him the title of captain. So you're telling me Ares picked him as the, as the horse that would win the race, but didn't think, huh, those marks are familiar. Wasn't there a story about marks? Did we kill like a baby because of that? Ah, you know what? He added them after the prophecy, so, you know. That seems dumb. I feel like Ares is dumb. Kratos then renounces his allegiance to the oracle curve of his failures and turning him into the ghost of Sparta. Oh, to Sparta, Kratos heals his daughter. I'm only two minutes in? Holy fuck, I'm slow at comprehending. Daughter, and the king of Sparta bestows on him the title of captain. As captain of the Spartan army, Kratos leads his men to many victorious battles, often slaying scores of enemies with an increasing hunger for power, despite the wishes of his wife. Eventually, Kratos comes across a familiar enemy, the barbarian king Ulrich, who still blames Kratos for his father's death. Kratos and his army are no match for the rebuilt barbarian army, and Kratos, moments away from death at the hands of Ulrich, calls out to Ares in desperation. Ares, seeing a candidate to overthrow Olympus, accepts Kratos' offer of loyalty and kills the barbarians in exchange. He then gives Kratos the Blades of Chaos, symbolizing his servitude to the god of war. Under Ares' loyalty, Kratos slays many innocents, raises villages, and spreads chaos in the name of him. Under Ares' influence, Kratos slowly loses his humanity with every battle fought for the god. Okay, not the, uh, not the best influence. Seems a little bit little bit aggressive um all right but understand understand he basically owes Ares his life uh and and will murder to to do his, his loyalty Kratos slays many innocents raises villages and spreads chaos in the name of him 
Under Ares' influence, Kratos slowly... What's still confusing to me is that Ares wanted to overthrow Mount Olympus by sieging it. Zeus heard of a prophecy where someone with a mark was going to overthrow Mount Olympus, and, and so he sent Ares on a journey to find that person. Ares found a kid with a mark, took him, then saw Kratos with a mark, thought to himself, huh, that's funny, and then later in life decided to help him out because he was like, that's, a, that's someone who could take over Mount Olympus, when his job was to literally stop that exact human. So I think he just gave up on his job some way through his life. Like, he tried at some point in his life to stop that person because he picked a random person with a mark, but then just quit. He loses his humanity with every battle fought for the god. Soon, Kratos is tasked to raid a village of Athena's followers due to Ares' jealousy of Athena, whom their father Zeus favored. There, he encounters an oracle who warns Kratos of dark things awaiting him inside the city's temple. Kratos ignores this warning and enters the temple, blindly slaughtering those inside. However, afterwards, Kratos comes to realize that those inside the temple were none other than his beloved wife Lysandra and daughter Calliope. Ares reveals that he had transported them there secretly in order to sever Kratos' human ties and create the perfect warrior. Kratos leaves the bodies of his family inside the temple to burn, and as he exits, the oracle curses him, binding the ashes of his wife and child to Kratos' skin, forcing him to wear another reminder of his failures and turning him into the ghost of Sparta. Ew, they made him white. <laughs> Kratos then renounces his allegiance to Ares and breaks his oath, causing the Furies to hunt him down and torture him with endless illusions. Kratos then finds himself trapped in an illusion of his former home in Sparta. Orcos appears before him and helps him break the illusion using Lysandra's necklace and ring. Orcos then convinces Kratos to seek out Aletheia, the oracle at Delphi. He finds the oracle captured, but is unable to prevent her from being mortally wounded. Before her death, she informs Kratos that the only way he can be free of his oath to Ares would be to slay the Oaths Enforcers, the Three Furies. Wait, 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 back the fuck up. Why does he have an oath to Ares? What was his oath? ...is to hunt him down and... Kratos then renounces his allegiance to Ares and breaks his oath, causing the Furies to hunt him down and torture him with endless illusions. Kratos then finds himself trapped in an illusion of his former home in Sparta. So he, he gave an oath, right. He gave an oath that he would always serve Ares because Ares helped him in his time of need and now the Furies who are the Oath Keepers are chasing him down but shouldn't it be the Furies kid Orakai who does that? Orkos appears before him oh or is that the guy Orkos? and helps him break the illusion using Lysandra's necklace and ring Orkos then convinces Kratos to seek out Aletheia the Oracle at Delphi so Orkos is just kind of a he like doesn't really fuck with his parents like his job is to be an Oath Keeper but he's also like <laughs> my parents are so cringe he finds the oracle captured, but is unable to prevent her from being mortally wounded. Before her death, she informs Kratos that the only way he can be free of his oath to Ares would be to slay the Oaths Enforcers, the Three Furies. I don't feel like you need an oracle to figure that one out. How are you going to stop the people that are chasing you down to kill you? You kill those people. That was kind of a no-brainer. Kratos returns to Orkos, who informs him of Ares' true intentions all along to use him to overthrow Zeus. With this knowledge, Kratos travels to Delos to slay the Furies. Upon his arrival, however, he is ambushed and captured by them, and they proceed to torture him in the prison of the Damned. After two weeks of torture, one of the Furies leaves an opening for Kratos to exploit and escape his imprisonment. After various- They go two weeks? Didn't, it, didn't they keep that one badass motherfucker, that huge god down there for, like, centuries, like millennia? battles and illusions, Kratos is able to outsmart and outfight the Furies, slaying all three of them. Two weeks and they fucking fucked up? Two weeks! After the death of the Furies, Kratos returns to his home in Sparta where he finds Orkos, who reveals to Kratos that while he had killed the Furies, they transferred Kratos' oath to him, keeping the bond with Ares intact. Orkos hands Kratos his blade and asks him for an honorable death in order to permanently end Ares' hold on them. Kratos complies, killing Orkos and burning his home with the former Oathkeeper's body still inside. <laughs> he didn't say burn his home, bro. Damn! Pretty fucking badass of Orcos to be like, kill me, I have an oath that I have to keep to kill you. But then you do it, and after he dies, you're like, fuck your house too, idiot. <laughs> what the hell? If I was Orcos, I'd come back from the dead. I didn't say shit about arson. What was that about? I had like a lot of, like, trinkets I was gonna pass. I had like a will. I wrote a message to my family. What was that? That was fucked, man. No longer under servitude to Ares, Kratos dedicates his life to serving the gods of Olympus as their trusted warrior. After defeating an invading Persian army for the gods, Kratos appears before them to ask for his next task. Suddenly, however, he sees the sun fall from the sky, enveloping the world in darkness. Oh, that's because who fell? The god of sun. Our, our, uh, uh, I, 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 
Apollo. Kratos follows the last trace of light he can see to the Temple of Helios. After speaking to Athena, Kratos concludes that Helios had been captured, allowing the god of dreams Morpheus to entrance other gods into a deep sleep, allowing him to take control of Greece. Ins Different than what I thought. Inside the temple, Ios, Helios' sister, tasks Kratos to awaken her brother's fire steeds in order to find him. In return, she promises to relieve Kratos of his nightmares, which haunt him in the form of a melody his daughter used to play on her flute. He does this, and the steeds take him to Helios' location, the Underworld. There, he meets Sharon, the ferryman on the river Styx, who ultimately denies Kratos' passage, as it is not his time. Kratos engages him, but is knocked unconscious and thrown into Tartarus, the darkest depths of the underworld where the Titans had been chained by Zeus. Upon waking, Kratos witnesses Atlas' chains broken and the Titan missing. Kratos fights his way through Tartarus, eventually climbing out to confront Charon once again. After defeating him, Kratos uses his ferry to follow Helios' light down the river Styx to a temple. There- God, he's just doing a bunch of fucking chores. That's all this sounds like. Like, he just- he's- all he is trying to do- is get strong enough to, like, fucking kill Ares so he doesn't have to be, like, a pawn of the god that made him kill his own family. And he's doing just a bunch of random-ass side quests. He, like, the whole side quest is to get the god who made all the gods fall asleep, Morbius, fucking dead. All right? Which will never happen because Morbius will live forever. And then he just ends up in Tartarus and he has to deal with the Titans for a while? Like, that's a whole game's worth of shit to do. Dealing with the Titans? That's like 95% of Zeus's life was dealing with the Titans and shit, chaining him up. Making sure... Isn't Kratos also the name of the Titan? Kronos, never mind. Here Kratos sees his daughter upon the shore. He follows her inside, but instead finds Persephone, the queen of the underworld. Persephone reveals to Kratos that he can meet his daughter once again, and she is now residing in the Elysium Fields. Persephone... A good spot, that's a good spot. The Elysian Fields are a good spot. ...tells Kratos that to see his daughter, he must make a sacrifice, to give up all of his weapons and powers given to him by the gods. Kratos does this, transferring his powers into the Forsaken Tree, and regains his humanity. He reunites with his daughter, but the reunion is interrupted by Persephone, who reveals her true intentions. She reveals that it was her who released Atlas, whom she tasked with destroying the pillar that holds the Earth. She intends for this to kill everyone, including herself, to free her from her imprisonment by Hades as his wife. Kratos painfully makes the decision to give up his ability to see his daughter and regains his weapons from the tree. Doing this, he once again becomes the ghost of Sparta and, against his daughter's wishes, takes off to stop Persephone. Kratos finds the queen at the base of the pillar, and she carries him to the top. There, the two engage in a final battle. During this battle, Persephone attempts to confuse Kratos and convince him to return to Elysium to be with his daughter. So, Persephone, I know, is trapped in the underworld to live with Hades, and then she, like, lives with her mom the other half of the time, and, like, a part, like, a little bit further away from the underworld. And she wants to get out, so she wants to kill everybody, and I guess knocking down this pillar kills everybody. And he doesn't want to do that, because he doesn't want to kill everybody, for some reason. So he's like, no, I'm going to get my powers back from the tree and fight you. And so then... Persephone's like, okay, let's fight, but we can't fight here. It's, like, too crowded, and, like, honestly, the grass makes me struggle at running. So she brings him to some badass fighting place? Kratos finds the queen at the base of the pillar, and she carries him to the top. There, the two engage in a final battle. During this battle, Persephone attempts to confuse Kratos and convince him to return to Elysium to be with his daughter. Kratos resists this, however, and Persephone orders Atlas to take care of him. Atlas does not get this chance, however, as Kratos chains the Titan to the ceiling of the underworld and returns to Persephone. Best Dude, what is up with Titans and getting chained? It, like, it's such a weak point with them. ...testing her in battle and killing her. Her body explodes, destroying the pillar and leaving Atlas as the only thing holding the world together. Atlas, though defeated, taunts Kratos as he remains a slave to the gods. Kratos accepts this fate as he can only hope that serving the gods will cause them to one day free him from his nightmares. It's so convenient that Atlas was right there. Like, if there was one motherfucker who you needed to hold up something really heavy, and then all of a sudden you looked around and Atlas was right there, you'd be like, son of a bitch. This could not have worked out more perfectly. <laughs> Classic Atlas. Atlas then predicts to Kratos that they will meet again before Kratos leaves to return Helios to the sky. Weak, and now knowing that his sins will never allow him to see his daughter again, Kratos falls from the chariot, landing on a cliff overlooking the Aegean Sea. Sometime after waking, Kratos is sent into the sea to kill a hydra and return peace to the waters. 
After doing so, he is approached by Athena, who asks Kratos to save her city, Athens, from her brother Ares, whose army is currently advancing. Kratos, seeing an opportunity to get revenge on Ares, agrees on the condition that the gods free him of his nightmares once and for all, as well as offer him a chance at redemption. Kratos enters Athens to find the town's oracle, who tells him that in order for a mortal to defeat a god, he must seek the power of Pandora's box, which is locked inside a temple constructed on the back of the titan Kronos, who Zeus cursed to wander the desert of lost souls for eternity. Okay, let's not word that wrong. That was not a just a random titan Kronos. That's Zeus's dad. He got his dads on all four walking around in a desert. That's tough love. Kratos makes his way to the temple, encountering a mysterious grave digger on the way. I wish for a little bit of empathy for my kid. And if I tried to eat my kid or successfully ate them and then my kid broke out of my stomach, I hope they would give me a second chance. Inside the temple, Kratos solves several puzzles in order to find Pandora's box. However, Ares senses this and throws a pillar from Athens, impaling Kratos and killing him. Ares then arrives and steals the box as Kratos dies and returns to the underworld. However, with help from the Gravedigger, who refers to Kratos as my child, he is able to climb from Hades and return to Athens. There, he opens Pandora's box and gains the power to confront Ares. After a battle, Ares tortures Kratos by forcing him to relive his family's death at his hands. Kratos resists this, however, and Ares is forced to strip the Blades of Chaos from Kratos' arms and kills the illusions of his family in front of him. Freed from the illusion, Kratos finds a nearby sword being used as an ornamental bridge and uses it to kill the God of War. That's all it took? Found an ornamental sword? That shit wasn't even sharpened? We got butter knife edges? That's it. It's like finding a sword out of a set from, from Knives Out. Just hanging on a fancy millionaire's mansion. Just use that. The gods praise Kratos for killing the rebelling Ares. Kratos then asks Athena to finally free him of his nightmares. Athena then finally reveals to Kratos that while she can forgive his sins, his nightmares will stay with him forever. Kratos, feeling abandoned by the gods, climbs back to the cliffs overlooking the Aegean Sea, and feeling death as his only escape, throws himself off. However, Athena stops him at the bottom, claiming that there is now an empty throne upon Olympus. Kratos then enters a portal and claims his throne as the new god of war. He said the thing. Still haunted by his memories, Kratos decides to exp- Is that all the first God of War? Was that the entire God of War game, the first game? Was that just the first game? That was the first two games? That was three games? That was three PSP sequels in the first game. So the ending of it is the first game, and then everything that we learned before are the prequels. Because at first, that's a great ending. Explore his past against Athena's wishes. He makes his way to the Temple of Poseidon in Atlantis. Poseidon attempts to stop Kratos, but he defeats his defenses and reaches the city. There, Kratos finds, much to his surprise, his mother, Callisto, dying on the ground. She reveals to him that his father is the one who brought her there, and that his brother Deimos is still alive, but does not have much time. Before dying, she tells Kratos to seek out his brother in Sparta. Kratos then departs Atlantis, but not before encountering the Titan Thera, whom he frees, destroying the city in a flood. Kratos returns to Sparta, but on his way encounters and kills Thanatos' daughter, Arenes. Upon his arrival to the city, he is praised by its- I mean, damn, that fucking sucks for Arenes. Its ...inhabitants, led by a young Spartan who gives Kratos his arms from when he was the commander of the Spartan army. Kratos goes to the Temple of Ares, and after encountering a spirit-like vision of his younger self, he learns that he must return to Atlantis to find- <laughs> Damn. Temple of Ares, and after encountering a spirit-like vision of his younger That's self- That's me to my younger self when I remember that ring story. He learns that he must return to Atlantis to find <laughs> Death's domain. <laughs> Upon returning, however, Kratos is stopped by a statue of Poseidon inhabited by the god, who warns him that he will pay for sinking the kingdom of Atlantis. Kratos avoids the statue and makes his way through the ruins of the city, eventually coming across the gravedigger once again, who cryptically warns Kratos not to alienate the gods. Kratos then finds the gateway to Death's domain. Gravedigger is just like his own personal oracle. Inside, Kratos finds and frees his brother, who becomes enraged at him for seemingly forgetting about him for all this time. Honestly fair. Thanatos arrives and intervenes, capturing Deimos and bringing him to the same cliff Kratos attempted to kill himself from. Kratos saves his brother and the two reconcile. Kratos gives Deimos his arms, and the two fight Thanatos together. During the battle, Thanatos kills Deimos, and Kratos avenges his brother by finally killing the god of death. A broken Kratos then carries his brother up the mountain, where the gravedigger has prepared a grave for him. Kratos ponders what he has become, and the gravedigger answers, death. 
the destroyer of worlds. Well, if you kill the god of death, then shouldn't your brother come back? How does that work? Athena appears before him and attempts to elevate him to a full god. Kratos stops her, however, and returns to Olympus, claiming that the gods will pay for what they have done to Kratos and his family. He's not a full god yet? What is he? He's killed like three gods. One randomly. The god just means you can't die. But then how is he killing the other gods? What the fuck is the difference between a demigod and a god if he's literally killing other gods? I guess there is a difference between immortal and invulnerable. Yeah, you're right. As he leaves, Athena mythically refers to him as brother. The gravedigger then buries Callisto next to Deimos and proclaims upon a third grave that now only one remains, as Kratos returns to his throne and plans his next move against the gods, leading his Spartan army to conquer Greece. After launching this attack, Athena pleads with Kratos to stop. He claims to owe her nothing and turns his back on her to assist his army in the town of Rhodes. There, he spots an eagle, whom he believes to be Athena in disguise, whom robs him of his godly abilities, and instead infuses them into the Colossus of Rhodes, who comes to life and tries to kill Kratos. Why is he big as shit? Zeus arrives and offers Kratos the Blade of Olympus, which he once used to win the great war between the gods and the titans. Zeus urges Kratos to infuse the blades with his remaining godly powers, which renders him mortal once again, but allows him to destroy the Colossus from the inside. Upon doing this, however, Kratos is crushed by the Colossus's severed hand. Determining that he must retrieve the Blade of Olympus to get his immortality back, he slowly makes his way over to it, only to be stopped by Zeus, who reveals himself to be the eagle that stole Kratos' power. In an attempt to kill him to stop him from overthrowing Zeus, as he did with Ares. Zeus then stabs Kratos, killing him. Why didn't he just not give him... Oh, he tricked him. So he gave him the sword, and then Kratos was like, oh, this sword will help me beat Athena, but he needed to have him take the sword to get rid of his immortality. But if he was immortal, then again, what the fuck is the difference between being a demigod and being a god? Because it doesn't really feel like this dude was lacking much in the god department. He was immortal, he could kill other gods, and he was pretty fucking strong. I, I don't get it. I don't get what being a god is. I feel like it's the same. You get a 401k? Okay, that's, that's kind of tight. While he is being dragged into the underworld once more, the mother of the titans, Gaia, saves him and reveals that Kronos, Zeus's f Gaia. Zeus's mom. Father ate all of his children in an attempt- No. Isn't that like the original creator of all the worlds or something? Mother of the Titans, Gaia, saves him and reveals that Kronos, Zeus's father- Fuck, how does it go again? In Greek mythology, there was like- there was like a gold- There was like a gold generation of like gold things that existed, and there was like a silver generation of like silver things that existed. And then Gaia was created from that, and then made like the Titans, and then the Titans ruled it for a while. And then the Titans made the gods? Whew, shit's confusing. Gaia is Earth. Okay, yeah. ...ate all of his children in an attempt to stop the prophecy that he would die at the hands of one of his sons. Zeus's mother, however, hit him on an island that was wait, actually wait, back up, Gaia, back saves him, and reveals that Kronos, Zeus's father, ate all of his children in an attempt to stop the prophecy that he would die at the hands of one of his sons. Zeus's mother, however, hit him on an island that was actually Gaia. Gaia raised the boy, but he grew vengeful and eventually sought to defeat the Titans, which he did by using the Blade of Olympus. Gaia offers to help Kratos exact revenge on the King of Olympus. Gaia gives Kratos the magical horse Pegasus, and he escapes the underworld to find the Sisters of Fate in order to change his past and kill Zeus. Kratos flies to the island of creation, and after besting several powerful foes, including a risen Ulrich, he comes across Icarus, whom he strips of his wings, plummeting below the earth and landing upon Atlas. Originally refusing to help Kratos... Damn, he's just a fucker. Everywhere this guy goes, he's just fucking with somebody. He sees Icarus, he's like, mine, takes the wings. Sees Dionysus, and he just sips his wine in front of him. Sees Hephaestus, probably starts fucking his bitch straight up. Still holding begrudgment over his imprisonment at the Spartans' hands, Atlas is eventually persuaded to help him kill Zeus. Atlas helps Kratos return to the surface, where he awakens the phoenix and flies to the Temple of the Fates to meet the sisters. Atlas can do that? He can just punch through? That's kind of tight. There, he expresses his wishes, but the sisters deny him passage. 
Kratos then confronts the youngest sisters, Lachesis and Atropos, who attempt to take him back to his battle with Ares and force him to die by the god's hand in the past. He avoids this effort and traps the sisters in a mirror, then destroying it to seal them away for eternity. Kratos then makes- That's smart. I, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's some Looney Tunes shit. Trap him in a mirror, then break the mirror. Fuck you gonna do now? You're in the mirror world. ...his way to the eldest sister, Clotho, who operates the Loom of Fate. Kratos kills the final sister and takes control of the Loom to change his fate. He turns the threat of fate back to his death at the hands of Zeus and saves his past self by reclaiming the Blade of Olympus before Zeus has a chance to. The two then engage in a battle until Zeus stuns Kratos with a lightning storm. Kratos plays possum and pins Zeus before driving the Blade of Olympus into the god's chest. Before he can kill him, however, Athena appears and intervenes to protect Olympus. Zeus attempts to escape, Kratos lunges at him with the blade, and Athena sacrifices herself by jumping in front of it, saving her father. Kratos asks Athena why she would do this, and she reveals that she did it to allow Zeus to stop the cycle of sons killing their fathers, finally revealing that Kratos is, in fact, a son of Zeus. Vowing to destroy Olympus, Kratos returns to the loom and turns back time all the way to the Great War. He calls out to Gaia and they return to Kratos' time where an injured Zeus is calling on his fellow gods to kill Kratos. The Titan army, led by Kratos, then storm Olympus with the intent to win the Great War once and for all. Holy shit. Whoa. I'm going to back this up. I'm going to back this up because that got confusing real fast. Okay. This kind of feels dumb. But... If he lost, he could just keep doing that rewind time thing every time. Like, any time a game or a storyline or a plot or a movie has, like, it's rewind time, everybody, you could just spam it, right? And I don't really like how time travel opens up, you know, plot holes, but... Olympus, Kratos returns to the loom and turns back time all the way to the Great War. He calls out to Gaia and they return to Kratos' time where an injured... Okay, okay. So they go back to the Great War, which was the gods trying to overthrow the Titans because the Titan, Kratos, who was the head god, had become quite unfavorable to the gods because he started eating them because he was told one of his sons would take over. And so the gods were like, it's kind of unfair that you heard this thing and then that made you want to treat us bad uh, because you heard we were going to overthrow you. Now we're going to kill you and overthrow you. Kronos, sorry. Yeah, Kronos, my bad. Zeus is calling on his fellow gods to kill Kratos. The but why is Zeus trying to tell them to, till, to, to kill Kratos? Shouldn't he not exist at this time? Or does he like know? He like knows what's happening. He knows what's up. Because we're all the way back to the Great War, right? Titan army led by Kratos then storm Olympus with the intent to win the Great War once and for all. The Titans and gods wage a very intense and bloody battle as Poseidon begins to take on Gaia. Kratos draws him into Gaia's grasp and is able to weaken him, eventually knocking him onto a platform and beating him before gouging his eyes out and snapping his neck, killing him and flooding the entire world. Can I play a God of War game that's just like... You are doing a store simulator and you have to like run a store in like, I don't know, Sparta. And then everything that's happening just happens to you. And you're just a dude. And it's just, it's like a Thursday and the world starts flooding and you're like, Fuck. and you hear the news like 10 days later that fucking Poseidon's dead. Shit would be crazy. Kratos and the Titans then make it to the top of Olympus and confront Zeus, who, anticipating their arrival, hits them with a blast of lightning, damages Gaia, and knocks her and Kratos off the mountain. Attempting to hang on, Kratos is then betrayed by Gaia, who lets him fall as he is no longer a use to them now that they have reached Zeus's throne. After falling once again to his death, Kratos makes his way through the river Styx, lamenting that he was used as a pawn by both the gods and the Titans. He then reunites with a reformed Athena, who is willing to help Kratos from her new level of existence. He then realizes the goal of his final quest, extinguishing the flame of Olympus in order to finally defeat Zeus. To do this, however, he must find Pandora, the child of Pandora's box's namesake. Kratos makes his way through Hades and eventually finds Hades' palace. Every one of these fucking games, this guy just dies. Like, the God of War series will never end. Die. Try again. Die. Oh, get this. Try again. Die. Oh, I have a friend. I'm going to fly up now. Die. We're going to switch gods, actually. We're done with these gods. We kind of max this out. We're going to go to a new god. And the dead body of Persephone. 
Hades arrives and the two battle before Kratos defeats the god, sealing his soul into his own weapons. Kratos then escapes Hades through a gate and encounters Helios, whose head Kratos proceeds to rip off. He then encounters Hermes, who he kills, and later his own half-brother Hercules, whom he also kills. Kratos meets with Aphrodite and her husband Hephaestus in order to find their daughter Pandora. Hephaestus refuses to lead Kratos to her, however, and reveals that after Kratos opened Pandora's box, Zeus became overcome with fear and forced Hephaestus to reveal to the creation of the key of the box, which later took on a life of its own as a girl whom he named Pandora. Zeus then took Pandora and banished Hephaestus. Kratos urges Hephaestus, who tasks him with retrieving the Amphalo stone in order to make a weapon to allow Kratos to find Pandora. In his attempt to find the stone, Kratos comes across Kronos, who assumes he has tried to kill Gaia, and attacks him. Kratos fights Kronos and eventually frees the temple from the titan's body before he eats Kratos. Inside his stomach, Kratos retrieves the Amphalo stone and cuts his way out and kills Kronos once and for all. Kr the stone just happened to be in there? It's a stroke of luck? No? You get eaten, your whole goal is to find one stone, you end up in the stomach, you're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> this is a whole lot easier now. All right. Kratos confronts Hephaestus, who reveals that he was trying to send him on a suicide mission. Hephaestus attempts to feign innocence before trying to kill Kratos instead. Kratos shakes this off and kills him by impaling him on his own anvil before heading off to retrieve Pandora. Kratos' quest takes him to the Gardens of Olympus, where he finds Hera, the wife of- So he's just fucking killing all the gods. God of War 3 is like, is like, we are going to literally put every Greek god in this and kill them. Zeus, drunken and belligerent. After it must be fun, it must be just boss fight after boss fight. Making his way through the gardens, Hera confronts Kratos once again, insulting Pandora and causing Kratos to lash out and snap her neck, causing oh. all plant life to die. Oh. Kratos makes it to the labyrinth and finds Diadolus, the labyrinth's architect. Trapped inside, Diadolus claims that Zeus promised him that he would have his son Icarus back once he completed the labyrinth. Kratos reveals that Icarus was in fact dead before activating a trap and killing the architect. Inside the labyrinth, Kratos Why? Why? What? I've been on board with him for a lot of these kills. All right, I've been on board, and that's not a, a easy thing to admit. That one just sounded like he found a ki a guy whose kid was dead, told him, "Hey, your kid's dead," then fucking killed him. That that one didn't seem fair. That seemed kind of personal and shit. Oh my god. That one seemed a bit personal. That was a bit too far. That was a bit too far, IML. Kratos finds Pandora. Oh, he killed the kid too? Are you fucking... Labyrinth ...and finds Diadolus, the Labyrinth's architect. Trapped inside, Diadolus claims that Zeus promised him that he would have his son, Icarus, back once he completed the Labyrinth. Kratos reveals that Icarus was in fact dead before activating a trap and killing the architect. Oh my god, he Fortnite dance on him. Inside the Labyrinth, Kratos finds Pandora and takes her with him. In the flame of Olympus's chamber, Kratos raises the labyrinth to access Pandora's box. However, Kratos refuses to let Pandora sacrifice her life, as he does not want to cause her death as he did his own daughters. Really? Yeah, that's where we're drawing the line. Really? You just killed a man's kid, then told his father that he's dead, then killed his father after he was sad about his kid not being there. Now you're a family man. Now we're a little too soft, a little too touchy. What? It's like the, also the only thing that you wanted this entire time. It's for a while I thought you were killing people randomly. Like you just found Hermes, you're like my wings. You saw Hera got mad, snapped her neck. Fucking family man status on the one person you needed to die, and you don't even have to kill her. She chooses to embrace her fate, however, and breaks free, only to be stopped by Zeus. Okay, my ass. All right, you know what? Actually, I don't believe this. Own daughters. If you for a second believe that Pandora broke free from the grip of Kratos, who fucking choked out and killed Hera with one hand, a literal god, he let her go. He was like, Oh no, please don't do it. Don't go to the box and open it with your body by sacrificing your life. Oh no, I'm a family man. That's fake. That's fake, dude. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. She chooses to embrace her fate, however, and breaks free, only to be stopped by Zeus. 
Zeus mocks Kratos for showing care for Pandora as if she was his own, and tosses her aside before engaging in battle with his son once again. Oh, literally tosses her. He tosses her like a fucking ragdoll. For Pandora as if she was his own, and tosses her aside before engaging in battle with his son once again. During the battle, Pandora attempts to run into the flame in order to put it out before Kratos grabs her to stop her. Pandora pleads with Kratos to let her seal her fate, and Zeus provokes him by telling him not to fail Pandora like he did his own family. Kratos reluctantly lets her go, and the flame of Olympus is extinguished. In the wake, Kratos opens Pandora's box once again, only to find that it is now empty. It's the friends we made along the way. Zeus mocks his son once again, and the two meet outside and gaze upon the destruction Kratos has caused. The two are interrupted by Gaia, however, and she tries to kill them both. The two then enter a wound in Gaia's chest and fight beside her heart, draining the life out of it. Oh, I thought they said a womb. Kratos, powered by the heart of Gaia, then impales Zeus into it with the Blade of Olympus, finally killing both Gaia and his father Zeus. Awakening upon a broken earth, Kratos finds Zeus's body and retrieves the blade. However, as he tries to leave, Zeus's spirit attacks Kratos and drains him of his anger and willpower, replacing it with fear and loss, the forces that plagued his father. Trapped in his psyche and once again being tortured by his memories, the spirit of Pandora appears and helps Kratos abolish these torments through hope. Kratos returns to the physical world and forces Zeus's spirit back into his body. Kratos then charges him and beats him to death with his bare hands, finally killing him and destroying Olympus for good. Afterwards, Athena appears once more and congratulates Kratos, asking him to turn over the power he found inside Pandora's box so she could finally give it to mankind. Kratos laments that the world is destroyed and anything she would have to give would be useless. More so, the box was empty, and Kratos believed Pandora had died in vain, simply another casualty in his quest for vengeance. Athena reveals to Kratos that when the evils of the Titans were first sealed into the box, she placed the most powerful weapon in the world beside them to counteract them, the power of hope. Athena had initially believed that when Kratos opened the That is about as corny as the power of friendship. There's a whole Avatar episode about this the box for the first time, all of its evils had transferred unto him, and hope was lost, when in actuality the evils went to the gods and Olympus, and hope was buried deep in Kratos under his pains. Only upon forgiving himself was the power able to release inside of him. How the fuck do we go from killing gods, badass fights, to all you have to do is forgive yourself? Kratos, realizing he has nothing left to live for, impales himself with the blade of Olympus. You kill yourself instead of doing that? That's the battle you lose? Is this like an allegory for real life? The one battle he couldn't beat, forgiving himself. Freeing the power of hope into the mortal world. Athena is angered by this and tells Kratos that she is disappointed, to which he responds with a final laugh before she removes the blade, leaving him to die. Sometime later, we see the mural where Kratos' body once was, now abandoned, with nothing but a trail of blood leading to the great sea that now enveloped the world. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Okay, he fucking left the world a pretty shit spot. He, he, like, he left hope, but also the world was flooded. All plant life died, so everybody's starving. There's no wine anymore. He broke the one guy's fucking sternum who made tools and shit. Where was Aphrodite in that? They don't fuck? Do they fight? Okay, they fuck. They fuck. Yeah, they fuck. They for sure fuck. Okay, that makes way more sense. That makes way more sense. Show us. I'm not going to show you a sex scene between Aphrodite and... I'm not going to do that. That would be weird. That would be weird to do. Oh, the guy who made the videos in chat? I recognize this video. This guy talks too fast. Under his pants. I know what you're replying to on the first two things, but the third one, I am worried. Either way, Suggestive Gaming, thanks for the video.
It's really great. It's very helpful. I'm trying to learn about God of War before God of War comes out. Uh, and that was only the first part, boys. The second part is 40 minutes. <laughs> so strap in. It is movie night. With God of War Ragnarok right around the corner, I, Suggestive Gaming, figured now would be a perfect time to catch up on what has led our heroes to where they currently stand. You may have already seen my video covering the original God of War saga, maybe even on someone else's channel, and if you haven't, I recommend you do so before watching this video. Oh fuck, that's me. You guys watch it on my channel. Oh. Um... as it will pick up exactly where that one left off. The link is in the description or on screen now, so head over there and come back once you're done to get the full story. And now, without further ado, this is what you need to know about God of War Part 2. You guys are all going to rewatch it, right? Press 1 if you're all going to rewatch it, and go subscribe to uh, um, Suggestive Gaming right now. Just press 1. So press 1. Sometime after... Press 1. After bringing an end to the reign of the gods of Olympus, Kratos awakens to find himself denied of the comforts of death, and instead cursed to walk the earth as punishment for his deeds. Soon the blades of- By who? Who? He killed everyone. Who the fuck? Chaos returned to him, and he attempts to throw them into the sea, only to find them mysteriously return to him after a night's sleep. Hoping to escape from his past to at least find some kind of solitude in his eternal punishment, Kratos sets sail to new lands, again attempting to rid himself of the blades. When Kratos reaches shore, he passes out, and when he awakens, he finds the blades waiting for him once again. He discards them again before coming across a village, where he is met by the inhabitants with fear. He soon learns from an old man that his legend as the Ghost of Sparta and the God of War is known in this Land of the Pharaohs. The man warns Kratos that he cannot escape his destiny, but Kratos simply knocks him aside and walks off. Kratos continues walking, sleeplessly, to avoid the blade's return. As days turn into months, Kratos eventually succumbs to his slumber and awakens again to find the blades of chaos before him. Mm, this is, he actually lived it. He actually lived the, would, if you were immortal but a snail touches you, you die. Question. Refusing to allow his past to keep up with him, Kratos again leaves the blades behind and continues his trek, being taunted by various talking animals along the way who warn him of his destiny that lies ahead. Again, Kratos is overcome by exhaustion and passes out, finding Athena waiting for him in his dreams. The goddess tells Kratos that the two of them are not yet through with each other, and instructs him to return to his home and fulfill his purpose. Kratos then awakens, unsurprised to find the Blades of Chaos return to him once again. However, Kratos is surprised to find the old man from the village now before him, who instructs him to pick up the Blades to prepare for battle, as the hour he will be needed is fast approaching. Kratos defiantly throws the Blades aside again and continues walking, eventually reaching the same village he left months ago. Bro, he's going to have a fucking fight come up. The blades are going to be thrown. He's going to be so mad at himself. While Kratos is confused at how he circled back to the village, he is soon distracted by the villagers, who are again fearful, but not of him this time. Instead, they beg for his help in fighting the giant Chaos Beast, which soon attacks the village. The villagers and the mysteriously present old man surmise that their prayers to the gods summoned Kratos back. Angered at the thought of the gods controlling him once again, Kratos refuses to help. <laughs> Thank God you're here, Kratos. What the fuck? <laughs> there's a TikTok meme there. When the game comes out, there's a TikTok meme there. It's like a sound, and it's like... And it's like, you know, I don't know, relatable thing. It's like, oh, thank God. And then it's Kratos. And then it's like, and at this point, I was angered. I, 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 I'm not good. I'm not going to keep thinking about it. But The villagers run to escape the beast, and Kratos turns to find that the old man has vanished as the creature advances towards him. I, we're working on a meme here. 
Kratos gives in and fights the Chaos Beast, defeating it with his bare hands. Afterwards, the villagers return, but tremble in fear once again, running off while screaming of a monster. Kratos, confused as the Chaos Beast is dead, turns to see the old man once again, who claims that the threat has not yet been defeated. He turns, and a much larger Chaos Beast emerges from the sea. The villagers beg Kratos to help them once again, but wanting to be left alone, he again simply walks away. The beast follows him, and an annoyed Kratos gives in, lunging at the monster to attack. The giant creature simply shrugs him off, sending Kratos crashing to the ground below, where the impact knocks him unconscious. In his dreams, Kratos finds Athena once again, this time accompanied by Thoth, the Egyptian god of wisdom, and the two tell Kratos that he must fulfill his purpose as it was written, instructing him to finally take the Blades of Chaos. Kratos tries to deny his fate, but Thoth, revealing himself to be the old man as well as all of the talking animals, simply tells the former god of war that much like in his homelands, in the land of the pharaohs, his destiny is already written and cannot be avoided. Kratos reluctantly succumbs to their reasoning and picks up the blades, awakening back in his battle, which he continues, finally emerging victorious and slaying the Chaos Beast. Exhausted from the battle, Kratos passes out once again, and Thoth states that his purpose in the land of the pharaohs is complete, and his path will carry him to another land that needs him as well. Kratos, frustrated that he is still a slave to fate, but now knowing that there's nothing he can do about it, simply grabs the Blades of Chaos and continues walking, forced to relive his nightmares in his mind as he journeys towards his destiny, another new land. Decades later, it feels like... like a sad story it feels like he's a self-aware character in a video game who's on a linear path that he has to follow and he hates that he's on a linear path he did rewrite fate once that is true honestly he kind of fucked up there was like three times that he was killed and died and he could have just stayed dead but he kept going back, and he was like, no, 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 I'm not dead this time. Like, you could have just stayed dead. You're fucking begging for it now. Back when you were dead, you didn't have that same energy, all right? Everybody thinks they're about it until they're in the spot, okay? Well, he wanted revenge. What do you want more? Kratos has found his way to the land of the Norse gods, where he meets a woman named Fay, whom he marries and settles down with in a home in the Wild Woods region of the Midgard realm. The pair soon have a child, who Kratos gives the name Atreus, after a Spartan soldier he fought alongside long ago, and he decides to keep his status as a demigod. Is Atreus the one that gave him his spear and shield? God, a secret from the boy. Hoping decides to keep his status as a demigod a secret from the boy. Hoping to learn to control his rage, Kratos frequently ventures out into the woods, where he is attacked by the animals inside. Honing his anger, he learns to refrain from fighting back and instead simply deflect their attacks. However, he soon learns from a large troll that he still doesn't have full control over his emotions. One day, Fay leaves to go hunting leaving Atreus and Kratos at home. That's not going to go well. Also, feels like the bad call there. Hey, look, I'm all about breaking gender roles and gender norms. But if you are married to the god of war who has killed literal gods, maybe have him go hunt. Because I'm making a call right now that if it's one day she leaves to go hunting, it didn't go well for her. I'm just guessing here it's not going to go well for her. Because I remember this game and a lot of the words in it were boy. And not many of them were wife. Faye was twice his size. Oh, then she'll do well. Kratos instructs Atreus to stay behind and chop wood as he heads off to find another challenge for his rage control. He soon comes across a giant bear attacking an old man, and Kratos fails to control himself, violently killing the bear before walking off, blaming the old man for setting off the events that led to him losing control. 
He leaves him for dead, returning home as another group of men watch him pass through an illusionary wall cloaking his home. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say, I think... <laughs> I think the lack... Okay, whoa. If you're trying to control your rage, I think killing a bear that's attacking another human, not really rage, feels like a right thing to do. Leaving the human to die because they got attacked by a bear, that feels like a lack of rage control. Don't know if that's... Feel like he got that backwards. Kratos returns to find Atreus playing with toys instead of chopping the wood, but before he can scold the boy, the group of men arrive and begin to speak to Kratos in their tongue, which he cannot understand. Atreus translates and reveals that the men have come to take revenge on Kratos, blaming him for their brother's death. Kratos denies killing anyone, claiming that he only killed a beast, before the men transform into bear-like creatures themselves Oh shit. And engage in battle. Yeah, you did. Well, you did kill his brother then. Kratos defeats the. Wait, I only. I didn't kill a, a, anyone. I killed someone that looks exactly like a. Oh, shh. Dang. <laughs> creatures, killing one threatening Atreus with the axe the boy was to use to cut the wood. When another man threatens to go bring the rest of his clan to the house, Kratos chases him, bringing Atreus along. Frustrated at losing the man's trail, Kratos begins to feel his rage boiling inside, but he is able to control it, just as he tries to teach Atreus to control his own fear. Atreus suggests that the pair visit the Old Seer, who may know more about the clan of Beastmen. Kratos agrees, and Atreus leads the way. Once they arrive at her hut, Kratos speaks with the Seer- What the fuck happened to the wife? Is she coming back soon? She's still out hunting? ...who reveals that the men are known as Berserkers, who receive their strength from their own fury, focusing it through a totem they worship. Kratos asks the location of the totem, and the seer only states that she can reveal the location through a ritual she must perform. Kratos and Atreus wait outside for her answer, and soon she shows them the way to the totem, warning Kratos that he must control his own anger in order to defeat the Berserkers. Kratos leaves Atreus with the seer and journeys to the Berserker's camp, where he finds their sacred totem. While Kratos initially tries to sneak past the sleeping Berserkers to destroy their idol, one awakens and alerts the rest, as they transform into their bear-like forms. Kratos' rage immediately burns white-hot, and he attempts to fight the Horde, only to find their own strength surpassing his. Finding himself unable to use his brute strength alone, Kratos remembers the seer's words and centers himself, controlling his rage and thinking quickly to destroy the totem, transforming the berserkers back to their human forms, who he is easily able to kill before burning their encampment to the ground. W. Cool. Back in the seer's hut, the old woman gives Atreus a mysterious knife, telling him he must use it soon. Before he can ask what she means, a berserker arrives in the hut and attacks the seer. Kratos arrives shortly after and snaps the man's neck, instantly killing him. As she lays dying, the seer asks Kratos to take care of her remains, before warning him that while he is able to defeat his enemies with ease, one day he'll have to conquer himself. Yeah, that was the whole first three God of Wars. I guess that's what he failed to do. Kratos exits the woman's hut, and he and Atreus build a funeral pyre for the seer's body. As they walk back home, Kratos tells his son, as well as himself, that from now on, he'll handle the fighting. Not too long after, a dying fae asks Kratos to scatter her ashes at the highest peak in the Nine Realms. Where did that come from? What do you mean a dying fae? She's dying? Why is she dying? What happened to fae? I feel like I missed something. What happened to fae? She's dying now. She's sick? Okay, so the hunting went well? Okay, that's good. After she passes, Kratos uses her weapon, the Leviathan Axe, to chop down a tree marked with her handprint to use for assembling her funeral pyre. While cremating Faye's body, Atreus notices her knife and grabs it, burning his hand in the process. Kratos nurses Atreus's wound, giving the boy his mother's knife. Knowing that now it is his sole responsibility to raise his son, Kratos takes Atreus hunting to prove himself. Is that actually his mom's knife, or was that the same knife that he was given to by the woman. He has two knives? He's got two knives. 
All right, lock it in. He's got two knives. Atreus grabs his bow, and the pair go looking for deer while Faye's body burns. Well, it you couldn't wait? Am I crazy here? I've never been deer hunting. I don't know the timeliness required. I'm imagining that you probably could wait out your mother burning funeral thing. Oh, fuck. I just didn't think it would take this long. I, I we gotta get deer. <laughs> we just got. I mean, they're gonna be gone. While Atreus finds a deer, he is unable to calm himself enough to hit it as it runs off. As the pair track the deer, they are attacked by undead draugers, which Atreus notes have never come that close to their home before. After Kratos fights them off, the pair continue to chase after the deer, and when they find it, Kratos helps his son aim his bow to finally hit and take down their prey. As Kratos and Atreus run over to kill the deer, a giant troll attacks, forcing the father and son to fight it off. Kratos takes the creature down, with Atreus providing support with his bow. After Kratos kills the troll, Atreus runs over and slashes at its corpse, unleashing his own rage and frustration, which causes Kratos to believe he is not yet ready to carry his mother's remains to their destination, despite the boy's protest, claiming that his sickness won't hinder him. They return home, and Kratos collects Faye's ashes into a pouch, solemnly giving his wife one last goodbye. Inside their house, Kratos speaks with Atreus about controlling his anger to use it as a strength instead of a weakness. Why not just play the game? Good question. The game is a prequel to God of War Ragnarok, which comes out Wednesday, which is in about, I mean, 48 hours, less than that. And I don't have the time to play this game in that time span. I also already know what happens because when the game originally came out, I watched Soda Pop and play most of it. Um, not what a prequel means. It's the one that comes before the one that is about to come out. I'll phrase it like that if you prefer. So anyway, it comes out 9 p.m. tomorrow. Exactly. So I don't have the time to beat it. I, I don't have the time, and, but I want to know what happens because it's like a 20-hour game. So the only universe I could beat it is if I just played it uh, every hour I have until then and then slept four hours and then woke up and did it. But I can't do that. Warning him that their path ahead will be difficult. The pair then hear a strange man outside, yelling at them to come out, as he knows what they are. Kratos hides Atreus under the floorboards before exiting the house to confront the man. The stranger comments that he thought Kratos would be bigger, before attempting to goad him into a fight. Kratos attempts to defuse the situation, but when the stranger refuses to leave, Kratos throws a punch. The stranger shrugs it off and delivers his own, powerfully propelling Kratos into the air and prompting a battle between the two. So While the bait. man has his own godlike powers along with an extreme Balder, resistance right? to pain, Kratos is able to hold his own. When the fight moves to the roof of Kratos' home, the stranger notices two beds inside and decides to investigate who Kratos is hiding inside. After trapping Kratos under a pile of rubble, the stranger advances towards the house triggering the Spartan's rage and allowing him to rush at the man with the full extent of his godlike power. As the battle draws to a close, the stranger reveals that Odin, the Norse god and All-Father, sent him to find answers. He then reveals that he can't feel any of the pain Kratos is inflicting on him, forcing him to snap the stranger's neck before throwing him off a nearby cliff. Now knowing that their home is oh. no longer safe, Kratos returns and collects Atreus taking him with them to embark on their journey to the peak of the highest mountain. Why do you play the game? I just can't play it. You just have to accept that this is the life I'm going to lead. It might not make you happy, but you just have to accept it. I, I cannot, in the time that I want to play Ragnarok in, play this before. Play some of it? That's a bad idea. It's not a terrible idea if I wasn't a streamer, but it's a bad idea because I'm a streamer. Why? Because I got a wedding to go to. I can't do it. You could play some of it. Why would... I, if I played the game for the two hours that I have free today, up to the point where I kill Balder, I feel like that would be less helpful for me to play God of War Ragnarok. Here's a suggestion, and you don't have to accept it, but what if we, hear me out, allow me to do what I want to do? And then if you disagree with it, you live your life differently.
Oh, shit! On their way up the mountain, Kratos and Atreus reach an overlook where they see that a protective stave was placed around the woods where they lived. But what I think is funny too, though, is that I watched a whole video on the first three God of War games, and nobody at any point in that said, you gotta play the games. Maybe that just says how good this game is, and that's why people are upset, because they feel like I'm missing out on a great experience, which I understand. But it was broken where Kratos but nobody cut down said the tree it adorned with Faye's handprint, which allowed the stranger to enter. While Kratos is confused as to why Faye would have him cut down the tree protecting their home, the pair nonetheless carry on. The Shortly after, so the pair are ambushed wise. by a cannibalistic group called the Reavers, and Atreus is forced to kill one of them to protect himself, an act that takes a heavy toll on the boy's consciousness. Kratos tries to convince the boy that he was forced to take the man's life to protect his own before the Reavers' corpses rise from the dead as Hellwalkers. To be fair, Kratos is probably the worst person in the world to console someone on an accidental death. Like, there's no unit like Kratos. No, you had to do it. I've been there. I've, I've been there myself where I had to kill someone. I felt so bad about it. So... Like, I feel like the actual things he's thinking is like, pfft, you only got one, bro. I'm at like 3,000 right now. Catch up. Which the pair fight and defeat again. Continuing on their way, Kratos and Atreus meet a dwarf named Brock, who claims that he and his estranged brother created Faye's Leviathan Axe, presenting his brand as proof. Kratos then lets Brock improve the axe, which he is soon able to test out. Further up their path, Atreus spots a strange boar, and draws his bow to practice hunting once again. After his arrow simply bounces off the animal's hide, Atreus gets after it, piercing its skin but losing Kratos after chasing it. When Kratos finds the boy, he is being scolded by a woman, known as the Witch of the Woods, who chastises the men for attempting to kill the last of the boar's kind. Kratos helps to nurse the boar before carrying it back to the witch's home. There, the witch sends Atreus to find supplies for medication, while Kratos stays behind. Okay. The woman reveals that Side she knows quest. the man's true nature, as well as his son's, and she questions his decision to hide that fact from the boy. She warns Kratos that once the gods of this realm find him, they'll be in grave danger, but Kratos simply states that it's his problem to deal with. You know what's funny is that gods, when there are multiple gods in those stories, are pretty fucking dumb, right? Like in 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 the uh, in the what, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, a a a Abra Abrahamic Abrahamic religions is that it? Like the monotheistic religions, the big three. Uh, th those gods fucking they know everything. Like there's nothing that they don't know, and that's and that's even memed to oblivion. Like I know there's that one clip on TikTok that's like <laughs> someone asking like like a, a devout Christian. They're like. So you think God knows what it feels like to be fucked in the butt? It, to to shocking reaction, but in in like God's religions, like Norse and Greek and all that, they're dumb as bricks. Was that Destiny? That might have been Destiny. Actually, it might have been Destiny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, I saw it on TikTok. Um. In those religions, they don't know jack fucking shit that happens. They have to be, like, told things by, like, carrier pigeon. They just don't know what's happening. Humans get to fuck with the gods in, the, in, the, in those worlds. After Atreus and Kratos retrieve the materials for the medicine, the witch offers her thanks by giving them marks, which will hide them from the gods. She then opens a shortcut for them to pass through before they say their goodbyes. The pair find a boat and row to the giant, central Lake of Nine, where they find a rune which Atreus translates to read, Sacrifice your arms to the center of the water, awaken again the cradle of the world. Kratos then throws the axe into the water, awakening the giant world serpent, Jormungandr, from its deep sleep. Get fucking owned! And then Jormungandr eats him and kills him. The axe returns to Kratos, and as the serpent leaves, the water level of the lake drops, allowing the two to find the Temple of the Norse God of War, Tyr, where they again meet Brock. Traversing through the temple, Kratos and Atreus emerge back on the path to the mountain to find another dwarf, Brock's brother Sindri, who also enhances the Leviathan axe. Soon the pair are met by a large ogre, which they defeat to finally reach the base of the tall mountain. 
as they arrive. However, I like how the bosses in God of War 3 are like, yes, yeah, so you kill er Her Hermes and you kill uh, Hera and then you kill Hephaestus and then you got to fuck Aphrodite and then you got to kill Zeus. And then this game is like, we got big monster. Rrr. They find their path blocked by a cloud of black breath. Surprisingly, the Witch of the Woods arrives and tells them that the only thing that can clear the Black Breath is the Light of Alfheim. She leads them back to Tyr's temple, where she shows them a room they can use to travel between the realms. Inside the realm travel room, the Witch gives Kratos a Bifrost, an object that will allow him to travel between realms. Is this like an actual thing in Norse mythology, or do they include this as a quality of life thing for fast travel? Because I thought they were like, and then we have Odin's quick save. <laughs> Odin's power will allow you to restore your life as it were in the vision you most recently had. <laughs> and I thought they are just quality of life in it. As well as capture the light of Alfheim. Kratos places the Bifrost inside the room's pedestal, and he turns the temple and its bridge outside to travel to the realm of Alfheim. As the group pass back through the temple to emerge in Alfheim, however, the witch is suddenly pulled from the realm, and she tries to give Kratos a warning about the light, but is interrupted as the doors of the temple lock behind her. Kratos and Atreus travel towards the light of Alfheim and encounter the light and dark elves of the realm engaged in an endless war. The pair fight through the hostile dark elves to reach the central chamber and the source of the light. Kratos enters the light, handing the Leviathan axe to Atreus beforehand. Inside the light, Kratos sees a vision of his journey where he hears Atreus speaking to Fae about his resentment over his father's distance towards him. Kratos then sees Fae, but before he can reach her, he is yanked out of the light by Atreus. The rattled boy yells at Kratos for how long he was inside the light. While Kratos states that he was only inside for mere moments, he looks around to see the remnants of a battle between Atreus and several of the Dark Elves. While Atreus is initially angered by his father abandoning him, the pair press on, with Kratos imbuing his bow with the power of the Light of Alfheim that's now contained in the Bifrost. Damn, Atreus! Holy shit! I like how Atreus didn't pull him out for, like, a while, too. Like, if he knew he could pull him out, he was like, he, like, killed, like, like 50 fucking Dark Elves. And then he's like... Ugh. Several hundred dark elves, and he's like, "I'm I'm bored. I'm bored of this." Using this new ability, Atreus and Kratos are <laughs> yeah. Atreus is low key strong. That's funny. Are able to exit, That's allowing true. the remaining light elves to re-enter the area. As the pair make their way back to Tyr's temple, they are attacked by the dark elf king, who they are able to work together to swiftly defeat. Afterwards, Atreus asks Kratos if he saw Fey in the light but angrily states that he wouldn't even care if he did, prompting a quick fight between the two, where Kratos reveals that he grieves in his own way. The father and son reconcile, reaching a slightly better understanding of one another. Kratos and Atreus return to the realm travel room and use the Bifrost to return to Midgard, where they make their way back to the mountain. Kratos clears the black breath using the light inside the Bifrost, right. and the pair are able to make their way inside the mountain, Classic discussing Bifrost. and learning about the giants of Jotunheim, who had disappeared from Midgard long ago. Okay, that felt like Tutorial Island was complete, and then you have upgraded weapons fully, and now you can enter the main world of the game. On their way. More than anything. After making their way up a tall shaft, being attacked by various enemies on the, he said shaft. On the way, the pair are confronted by a giant dragon. While they are able to escape from it, when they leave the mountain's caverns, they find the dragon outside, attacking Sindri. Kratos battles the dragon, killing it with Atreus' help. To express his gratitude for saving him, Sindri gives Atreus a bundle of braided mistletoe arrows before asking Kratos to retrieve a tooth from the dragon, which he then uses to imbue Atreus' bow with lightning powers. Damn, this Further up the mountain, Kratos helps Atreus repair his quiver's strap using some of the mistletoe from the arrows. You're telling me Atreus doesn't know his dad's a god yet. His dad is picking up his bow using Elfheim fucking Biofrost light and imbuing it with lightning. And he's like, yep, that's just what happens to kids. That's just how it works with children. That's what happens to us kids. Fucking what? He just thinks he's built different? What? 
He kills like 200 elves and he's like, fuck man. 11's hitting different these days. The pair soon spot the stranger who attacked their home, along with two other men speaking to a man with one glowing eye trapped inside of a tree growing around him. The stranger, revealed to be one of Odin's sons, named Balder, probes the man about where Kratos is headed, but the man claims to not know. After Balder and his accomplices leave, Kratos speaks to the man in the tree, who introduces himself as Mimir, the smartest man alive. Mimir reveals that the highest peak in the Nine Realms isn't the mountain they're currently on, but rather one in the realm of the giants, Jotunheim. He further explains that only one bridge to Jotunheim still exists, but it is locked away with a rune that only a giant would know. If he's so smart, how is he stuck in a tree? Actually true. You know what? I, I, I'm going to say the smart people are the people not stuck in a tree. Atreus states that all of the point. giants left Midgard long ago, but Mimir offers to help them speak with the only remaining one. Mimir then tells Kratos to cut off his head, instructing what? him to take it to the Witch of the Woods to have her reanimate it. What? Before Kratos does so, Mimir warns him not to keep his secret from Atreus, as the longer he waits, the more damage he does to the boy's psyche. Kratos cuts off Mimir's head and takes it back to the witch. Okay. When he and Atreus arrive... Wait, Mimir's the funny voice that's in your pocket at all times, right? The witch spots the boy's mistletoe arrows and demands he give them to her, which he does, before she promptly burns them and warns them about their danger. Afterwards, she helps Kratos revive Mimir's head, and the disembodied man recognizes the witch as the goddess Freya, Odin's former wife, something Kratos becomes angered at her for keeping secret, but she quickly points out his hypocrisy. True, but also why'd you burn the arrows? Kratos and Atreus leave Freya's home once again, now with the company of Mimir, or at least his head, who asks to take him to Tyr's temple, where he can speak to the last remaining giant in Midgard, none other than the World Serpent. At the temple, Mimir blows a giant horn, summoning the World Serpent. He speaks with the giant who aligns the tower's bridge to where they need to go, the location of a magical chisel that will allow them to draw the rune that will open the gate to Jotunheim. Confusing, but they're making a bridge. The trio head to the corpse of the chisel's former owner, the giant Thamor. Kratos and Atreus climb the dead giant's hammer, releasing it from the chains holding it up, causing it to fall and smash through the frozen tundra below, allowing the pair to make their way to the chisel. On their way, however, they hear the voices of the two men that were with the stranger when he confronted Mimir, Modi and Magni two sons of Odin's son, Thor. While so these are the guys that were with Balder? Is that what they're saying? While they try to avoid the two demigods, Modi and Magni soon find Kratos and Atreus, prompting a long and grueling battle. During the battle, Modi taunts Atreus by speaking ill of his mother, which causes the boy to lose control of his anger and go after him. Kratos, meanwhile, violently kills Magni, forcing Modi to run off in fear. Afterwards, Atreus collapses from his sickness, but the pair press on. What is his sickness? Is this like vague movie sickness where he coughs and occasionally blood comes out? What is sickness? He's got the black lung? What it? It's just vague. Okay, it's vague sickness. Same as his mom. Okay, that's a bummer. After reaching the buried chalice, Kratos is able to break off a piece for his own use, and the pair leave with Mimir warning Kratos that there will be repercussions for killing Thor's son. Mimir surmises that they'll be able to learn the giant's secret rune by finding it in Tyr's hidden vault, below the temple, and they head there to investigate. Using the chisel, Kratos is able to find the vault, where he and Atreus are soon ambushed by Modi. The demigod insults Fey once again, causing Atreus to lunge at him. While Modi simply smacks him aside, Atreus' rage finally boils over and he has his own moment of Spartan rage, overwhelming him and causing him to collapse. <laughs> Dang, that was badass, dude. Wow, really good rage moment. Kratos' own rage then takes hold and he overpowers Modi, taking his weapons and causing him to flee once again. Kratos grabs the unconscious Atreus and takes him back to Freya at Mimir's suggestion. On their way, Kratos hears someone blowing the world serpent's horn. When he reaches Freya's hut, the witch reveals that Atreus' true nature is fighting within him, and Kratos keeping it a secret is what is causing the boy's illness. To help him, Freya sends Kratos to the realm of the dead, Helheim, to retrieve the bridge keeper's heart. 
However, due to the realm's frigid nature, Freya warns that the Leviathan Axe will be useless against the enemies Kratos will face there. Knowing that Kratos must use the only weapon in the Nine Realms that can create a flame, Oh, I thought it was his fists. He leaves Atreus in Freya's care and returns home. On his way, Kratos witnesses a haunting vision of someone from his past, the Olympian goddess Athena, who he is able to temporarily shake. When Kratos reaches his home, he retrieves what he came for, the Blades of Chaos, which he buried underneath the house decades prior when he found that he could not escape them. Athena appears before him once again and taunts Kratos, claiming that he'll never be able to change and will forever be a monster. Kratos accepts this fate, but claims that at least he's no longer her monster. With the blades returned to his wrists, Kratos makes his way back to Tyr's temple, where he uses the realm travel room to reach Helheim. There, Mimir notices that Hel has become overwhelmed with the dead. They eventually reach the Bridge of the Damned, where Kratos fights the Bridgekeeper. After killing the large creature, he's able to rip out its heart to take back to Freya. As he goes to leave the realm, Kratos spots an illusion of his father, Zeus, beyond the bridge, but Mimir warns him not to go there, stating that Hel is known to torment its inhabitants with their pasts. On their way back to Midgard, Mimir realizes that Kratos is the legendary ghost of Sparta, and he also encourages him to tell Atreus about his true nature, stating that because Kratos hates all gods, that includes his own son, and Atreus can sense it, and it will only harm their relationship the longer it's kept secret. I mean, I think unequivocally he just has to tell his kid. Like, if you weren't convinced by the fact that like 20 people warned you, even the smartest guy around told you, the fact that your kid gets sick because you're lying to him should probably just seal the deal there. That's where you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll stop. Kratos brushes this off and returns to Freya's home. Kratos gives Freya the heart, and she tells him that the only way to fully heal Atreus is by telling him the truth. Freya then confides in Kratos and tells him about her own son, who was prophesized to die a needless death, forcing her to make a sacrifice to protect him, which only led to his resentment of her and drove him away. Mm, is your son Balder? After Freya uses the heart to heal Atreus, the boy awakens and the pair leave, with Kratos giving his thanks to the witch on their way. As the father and son make their way back to Tyr's vault, Atreus grows distant. Kratos asks him about this, and the boy reveals that he overheard part of his father's conversation with Freya, interpreting it to mean that Kratos is disappointed in his son for being weak. Kratos finally gives in and tells his son the truth, that he is a god from a faraway land. Kratos reveals that when he arrived in Midgard, he chose to live as a man, but in truth, he was born a god as was Atreus. Atreus God, his beard looks fucking great. Atreus is shocked with this revelation and asks if his mother was a god as well, and Kratos responds that she was only a mortal. When asked why he waited so long to reveal the truth, Kratos tells his son that he had hoped to spare him of the lifetime of tragedy that he himself went through. On their way back to the vault, Atreus notes that he doesn't have any godly powers yet, but Mimir theorizes that the boy's faculty for language is one of them. He also killed 200 elves. Can somebody tell him that kids don't do that? Can somebody just drop that fact on him? It's not how... The pair are finally able to descend below Tyr's temple to his vault and look for the Black Rune. His power is not that impressive. You get it with four years and about $80,000 at Arizona State University getting an English degree, okay? If Mimir's like, yo, bro, you speak English well, me too, okay? In a room full of treasure from the various lands, Kratos finds a bottle of wine from his homeland, and next to it, a vase depicting his days as the god of war, which he quickly tosses aside, breaking it upon the ground. When the pair find the rune, they must lower it to retrieve it. I as Kratos operates the mechanism, however, he is caught in a vine-like trap. Atreus is forced to quickly solve a puzzle related to the prophesized apocalyptic event known as Ragnarok, but when he does so, spikes begin to descend from the ceiling. Atreus is then forced to use his mother's knife to jam the gears operating the spike trap, saving his father, but destroying the boy's heirloom in the process. When the pair finally reach the rune, Kratos gives Atreus a new knife, one he forged himself from metals from his own land, as well as Faze, 
on the day of his son's birth. So this is the third knife this kid's gotten. With the intention of gifting it to him when he was ready to use it. Atreus then uses the knife to retrieve the rune, and he takes note of it before the pair are attacked by a pair of two large trolls. After the battle, the pair return to the... It's the third knife for, for people who only play the God of War, because in this uh, comic, before they got to the Norse land, they went to the land of the pharaohs, and then in that story, he got a knife, I think, right? Or some shit? Or it was in the Norse land, it was from like the bear people, something else surface and Kratos gives Atreus a drink of the wine he found from his homeland on the way. Kratos and Atreus make their way back to the gateway to Jotunheim, seeing Sindri on their way. Atreus, now arrogant and empowered by his knowledge of being a god, insults the dwarf, leaving him visibly hurt. This leads Kratos to ask how his mother would react to Atreus behaving this way, but the boy brushes it off, implying that her opinion wouldn't matter seeing as she wasn't a god. I get the energy, but you also are like the god of speaking English. Not a big deal. That's <laughs> not a big deal. I would hope that Kratos does some parenting here. Kratos, retorting that she was better than a god, warns his son against dishonoring his mother. As they enter the caverns in the mountain, Kratos and Atreus are again stopped by Modi, now badly beaten by his father Odin, who had blamed him for his brother's death. The man collapses, and Atreus goes to kill the man for what he said about his mother. Bro, what did you say about your own mother, you know? Seriously? Seems like a bit of a double standard. You're, you're, are you going to kill yourself? Doesn't really seem fair there. Then you probably shouldn't kill him. Kratos simply states that he isn't worth it, but when Modi makes one final insult towards Faye... His father's Thor, not Odin. That was an incorrect, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was correct. Because we said it earlier, that was right. I think you just said it wrong. It was like, it was like a slip-up. Atreus stabs him in the neck. He isn't worth it. But when Modi makes one final insult towards Faye, Atreus stabs him in the neck with his new blade before kicking him off a nearby ledge. Kratos okay, I'm going to blame Kratos for that one. Because he clearly pulled his hand back after stabbing him in the neck with a knife and then let the kid kick him off. So, like, really? You didn't, like, keep holding on to the hand of the kid who stabbed a man in the throat with a knife? Like, you weren't... Stabs him in the neck with his new blade... Stop that, stop before that. ...before kicking him off a oh, nearby shit. ledge. That's like if you... F if you ever do the jaws of life on a, on a dog that has something in their mouth they shouldn't, and you're prying it open, and you get the thing out. It'd be like getting the thing out and then just putting it back on the floor. And then being like, no, no, no! What do you mean? That's your fault at that point. Kratos scolds the boy for killing an already defeated enemy in indulgence instead of in defense, and he further warns that there are especially consequences for killing gods. The two reach the summit of the mountain, and Atreus draws the rune on the gateway. I'm not loving that Atreus is becoming a piece of shit. Allowing Kratos to use the chisel to trace it and open the portal to Jotunheim. Before they can enter, however, Kratos is ambushed by Baldur. And when Atreus attempts to help, he reveals that he is also a god, but is quickly overpowered. Kratos grabs Baldur and slams him into the stone gate, collapsing it and destroying their only way to Jotunheim. Yeah, that was fucking stupid as shit. There's one place you can't cr That's frustrating. That would frustrate me. Atreus tries to fight, but Kratos holds him back, forcing the boy to shoot his father with one of his lightning arrows to subdue him. Atreus then rushes at Baldur, stabbing him with his knife, but the invincible man simply pulls it out of his arm and plants it in Atreus's, grabbing the boy and jumping off the mountain. Kratos follows and lands on Baldur's dragon, where he fights the man, eventually getting knocked off the dragon to the bridge of Tyr's temple below. I've never had a kid, so I don't know what it's like to love a kid. If a kid shoots me in the arrow because I don't want him to fight an immortal god, while I am beating that immortal god's ass just to defend my child, probably wouldn't fuck with him after that. Probably wouldn't fuck with him. Kratos runs inside the temple and reaches the realm travel room. Shoots me with an arrow. Where he finds that Baldur has locked in the bridge to the- You could have gotten there on your own. You didn't need to spam what I said incorrectly. You're pretty smart. Realm of Asgard, the home of Odin and the other gods of his tribe. Kratos struggles to insert his Bifrost and instead locks the bridge into Helheim, where he, Atreus, and Baldur are violently sucked in. 
there, Kratos is able to knock Balder aside, and he and Atreus land safely within the realm. After Kratos scolds his son for acting out of character, asking him to honor his mother and choose the right path, the pair work their way to a boat they can use to get back to Tyr's temple. On their way, the pair experience visions of Atreus' past, Helheim's way of torturing its inhabitants, and the boy watches how he killed Modi in shame. The pair soon find Baldur reliving one of his own memories, and they learn that he is none other than Freya's estranged son. As it turns out, when she placed a spell on him to make him invincible, he was robbed not only of the feeling of pain, but also any of the pleasures of life. He begged his mother to remove the spell, but knowing it would cause her son's death, she refused. This caused Baldur to strangle his mother, but at the last moment, he allowed her to live, a decision he now regrets. But what's the point of being worried about your kid's death if their life will have none of the pleasures of life in it? I'm on Baldur's side on this one. What, what is the purpose of not dying if you don't get to experience life? I'm on his side. Freya's kind of dumb. She seemed really nice and sweet earlier. Kind of dumb in this. When Kratos and Atreus reach the boat, they begin to see visions of Kratos. It just, it's selfish. It's selfish because she, as the mother, does not want to lose her child. But that's selfish. It's not her call. I feel like he made the call. Nah, it's, nah I don't like that. It's past. That of his final battle with Zeus. After getting the boat to set sail upwards towards the bridge, the pair watch the memory of Kratos killing his father, and Atreus is forced to snap his father's attention back to the task at hand as the ship begins to crash. The pair jump to a nearby building, crashing through the roof and landing inside of one of Odin's secret chambers. There, Atreus finds a panel depicting Tyr somehow traveling to different lands, including Kratos' own homeland. Using the gift of sight granted to him by the giants, Mimir is able to uncover secret plans on the panel to create a key for another chamber Tyr kept hidden, which will lead them to Jotunheim. Hoping to create the key, the group head back to Brock, realizing that when Freya reanimated Mimir's head, she placed a spell on him to never speak about her relationship to Baldur or what his one weakness is. When they reach Brock, Oh, because I do remember that the whole time Amir's like, yeah, it must have slipped my mind. Totally forgot that Freya was related to Baldur. He refuses to make the key, but Sindri arrives shortly after to reconcile with his brother and help forge it. This scene's also really funny. I love this scene. Kratos and Atreus find the secret chamber and open it with the key, finding themselves below the realm travel room in a seemingly upside down room. The pair work to break the chains holding the temple's chambers, and Kratos is able to flip it using his brute strength. Oh shit. When they climb back up to the realm travel room, they find what Tyr was hiding. I've never played the game, I just watched a streamer play it, and I watched like a lot, a lot, a lot of the scene, and I remember that scene because the whole time the dude was like, I can make it, and the other guy's like, you don't know fucking shit about what you're doing here. But that, that's about it, and it was a while ago, so I don't know. The Unity Stone which allowed Tyr to travel within the realm between realms to reach all of the lands he explored. Using the stone, Kratos enters the realm between realms and jumps into the void, landing safely to find the tower to Jotunheim, hidden there by Tyr to protect the realm of the giants. Inside the tower, Kratos- Their whole goal this entire game is just to spread their, his, his wife, aka uh, Atreus' mom's ashes on the highest point, right? And the only reason they have to go to the land of the giants is because Mimir was there when they thought they were at the highest point and hit him with the, um, actually, this is not technically the highest point. If Mimir wasn't there, they could have just fucking ended this after 10 minutes. Call it a day. <laughs> Kratos finds a pedestal that absorbs the Unity Stone, and unleashes various powerful enemies from the various realms Kratos and Atreus traveled. After the grueling battle, the pair emerge from the tower to find themselves back in Midgard, with the tower to Jotunheim returned to a location the Bridge of Tears temple can reach. When they enter the realm travel room to lock in the bridge, however, Mimir realizes the travel crystal is missing, and in order to travel, the pair will need to find his other eye, which was taken by Odin. They ask Brock and Sindri if they know where Mimir's other eye is, and Brock reveals that Odin placed it in a statue of Thor, which Kratos and Atreus saw swallowed by the World Serpent. 
Amir blows the serpent's horn once again and asks if they can investigate his stomach for the eye, which the ancient giant agrees to, and the group grab their boat and row inside. Mm, I did this there they are able to find Mimir's eye and return it to his head. Why the fuck is the giant world serpent munching on statues? I, I guess I never lived as a giant world serpent, but I couldn't imagine looking at a statue and being like, mm, yummy. Now with everything required to re- Oh, he just doesn't fuck with Thor? Okay, so is, okay, that makes more sense. Jotunheim, the pair row their boat Okay, that was actually, that's a really early scene, right? Back out of the creature. On the way, however, they begin to feel massive blasts outside. Soon, the creature spits them out, and they land nearby as the world serpent falls unconscious. Freya arrives, confused as to what happened to the serpent. She claims to be looking for her son, but is surprised to find Kratos and Atreus meeting her with suspicion. Shortly after, Baldur emerges from the waters nearby, shocked to find his mother with his targets. Baldur threatens his mother, but Kratos steps between them, trying to tell the man that he will find no peace in vengeance. When Baldur refuses to listen, another fight between the two- Like, I get that he's the one who knows the most about that sentiment, but he also has the least ground to talk on. It'd be like a billionaire saying money doesn't make you happy. Like, yeah, you are probably the one with maybe the most right to say that because you have the most money, but also pretty easy for you to say that. Pretty fucking easy for you to say that right there, huh? You're a billionaire, you know. Two breaks out, with Freya attempting to stop the two. Atreus attempts to stop Baldur, but the man delivers a mighty punch to the boy's chest. Kratos catches his son, worried that the boy is covered in blood, which Atreus simply states isn't his. Kratos looks up to see Baldur with the mistletoe from Atreus' repaired quiver lodged in his hand, with the man delighted that he can finally feel something. Nearby, Freya, realizing that the spell protecting her son had been broken by- Oh, the one weakness must be the arrows! Which is why Freya destroyed the arrows and why Mimir did not know the one weakness that Baldur had. Mistletoe by his one weakness, reanimates the corpse of the giant Famor, which grabs them and carries them off to a new location. Baldur follows, and another fight ensues, with the giddy man now enjoying the feeling of battle. When did they get arrows back? While Freya continues to try to use Thamor's body to interrupt the fight, Kratos is able to gain the upper hand, eventually causing the woman to have Thamor use his frosty breath to freeze them. Atreus thinks quickly and uses his abilities to speak the old language of the giants to call upon the now awakened world serpent to take the giant's corpse out of the equation. Afterward, they are playing fucking 5D chess. Jesus. We do learn that at Arizona State, by the way, how to communicate with world serpents. It's a 496 class. It's a topics class. So Kratos begins to strangle Baldur, but Atreus reminds him that he doesn't need to kill a beaten enemy. Kratos gives Baldur one final warning to leave him, Atreus, and Freya alone before walking off. I mean, surely he's not going to do that because Baldur's only time where he's ever felt anything, even though it was pain, was from fighting you and getting struck by mistletoe. So I'm just going to make the call here. He's not going to do that. Baldur ignores this warning and approaches his mother, refusing to forgive her and instead begins to strangle her, which she accepts if it'll make him feel better. Kratos then grabs Baldur and quotes his father Zeus, stating, the cycle ends here, before also stating that we must be better than this, before snapping the man's neck. In his last breath, Baldur sees the- Wait, 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 why does snapping his neck- what? The spell is broken? He, it was broken the moment he touched mistletoe? The mistletoe already broke the spell. And he didn't even let him have, like, a little food first? Perhaps some sloppy toppy? He didn't let him feel one good thing? Just snapped his neck? Also, if mistletoe made him feel again, we could have saw this a long time ago. He was trying to murder Freya. 
you know what? I'm going to make a call here. He said the cycle ends here. Probably not going to end. The mom's probably going to be mad at Thor, or excuse me, not Thor, Kratos. I want to kill Kratos now. The snow beginning to fall as he finally dies his needless death. Freya rushes over to his body and promises Kratos that she will use all of her abilities to punish him for what he has taken from her. Oh, looks like the cycle ended, said no one ever, fucking idiot. She states that Kratos is a cruel and rage-filled animal who will never change, and asks if Atreus knows the true depths of his father's past. Kratos then reveals his true history to his son, telling him about the deal he made with a god, and how it led him to killing the innocent, the guilty, and even his own father. Atreus I like asks, throwing the guilty in there to make it like a like a shit sandwich. I killed guilty people, innocent people. My dad, lot of killings. All right, lot of guilty, lot of guilty, tied in there. Mostly, some would say, a lot would say. Asks if he will be cursed to kill Kratos, but the Spartan simply states that we will be the gods we choose to be, not those who have been. Freya then picks up Baldur's body and walks off without saying another word. The pair return to Tyr's temple one last time and lock in Jotunheim in the realm travel room. Treus uses Mimir's head to focus the energy to travel and the door to the realm of the giants is finally unlocked. What I don't fucking understand is why he killed Baldur. I still don't think he should have done that. I understand that he's kind of sensitive around people killing their parents and I respect that, but it just feels like like the trolley problem, except there's one people, one person on each side of the railroad, and he was just like, "Skirt, I'm just gonna kill you, so this person doesn't die." You know, eh? Just kind of puts the onus on you. So to save Freya, yeah, sure, but also feels like that's not his. That's not his fight to pick. Like Freya was kind of down to die. I, I'm not saying that killing Freya was the right call from Balder. But if Baldur's like, I want to kill you, and Freya's like, if it makes it happy, then it doesn't feel like it's your call that you get to make. She was literally down. Just doesn't, it feels like it was out of place. It was out of place. Mimir requests that they leave him behind so the father and son can have their moment, and Kratos leaves him with Brock and Sindri at the temple. But that's the path that he walked on, so he didn't want someone to repeat it. Sure, sure. But let's imagine we're playing God of War 3, and then right before Kratos kills Zeus, someone comes up and says, the cycle ends here and snaps Kratos' neck. I think Kratos would have been upset. And I think if you were playing the game at that time and that happened, you'd have been like, well, this is fucking lame. So, you know, how about you think of it like that? Do you still think it's a good idea? I personally don't. As they approach the summit of the mountain, Kratos removes the- Well, you cannot- Nope, so you can't actually bring morality into this because his argument was that he wanted to stop the cycle. It wasn't that, well, I don't think Freya's as bad as Zeus was. He just wanted to stop the cycle. So, I feel like I'm operating off of his argument, his thesis, and I feel like that's a, that's a, that's a W take, W. Injury I'm W. Mind, so the father and son can have their moment, and Kratos leaves him with Brock and Sindri at the temple. As they approach the summit of the mountain, Kratos removes the bandages covering his scars from the Blades of Chaos, claiming that he no longer has anything to hide. He then hands Faye's ashes to Atreus, allowing him to carry them the rest of the way. The pair find a room with statues depicting the giant's exodus from Midgard. They wonder why Faye sent them there, but Atreus touches a wall, revealing a large mural. The pair are shocked to see that the mural depicts Faye as well as all of the events the father and son had lived through, including the battle that just happened. Kratos surmises that the mural depicts Atreus' story, and that he wasn't the only parent with secrets. Atreus then realizes that Fae was a giant, making him part god, part giant, and part mortal. Kratos also realizes- So if you're a giant, you just auto get your life written down? You get like a kill cam for everything you've done. That Baldur was never looking for him, but rather had been sent by Odin to find Fae. As Atreus continues up the mountain, Kratos spots one last- Does Odin want to kill all the giants? Is that his thing? Is Odin like, don't fuck with those people. Because giants are like, 
titans to gods, maybe? Okay. This panel depicting Atreus screaming in pain while holding a man's dead body. Finally at the peak of the highest mountain in the Nine Realms. Okay, Atreus is dumb as fuck if he didn't look around and didn't see all the panels that depicted his life and was like, hey, what's on these? Wouldn't they want to? Atreus and Kratos look around to see the remains of dead giants. Kratos finally calling Atreus' son elects that the two scatter Fae's ashes together. The two then say their goodbyes to Fae as her remains join those of her kind. Afterwards, Atreus reveals one last thing confusing him about the mural. When translated, he was referred to by the giants as Loki. Kratos recalls that this was the name Fey wanted to give Atreus when he was born, but he elects to save this mystery for another day. Kratos and Atreus return to the realm travel room to regroup with Mimir, and as they return to Midgard, he warns that their actions have accelerated the coming of the great Fimble Winter, which precedes Ragnarok. Atreus and Kratos return to their home and finally rest. In his sleep, Atreus sees a vision of the end of the winter years later, in which a powerful lightning storm rips apart their house. When Kratos and Atreus approach the door, they see a large, hooded figure standing outside. Kratos asks who he is, and the man simply reveals a hammer, the legendary Molnir, revealing that the figure is none other than Odin's son, the god of thunder himself, Thor. While this is only a vision, giant fucking dude with lightning sparkling around him after lightning wakes you up. Oh, uh, who's this? Have you seen one fucking Marvel movie, you idiot? The pair nonetheless set forth with trying to prevent Ragnarok, with help from some familiar faces as well as new ones, while also facing opposition from those they once knew and those they'll soon meet in the next chapter of their journey, God of War, right? He's a DC fanboy. Black Adam? Ragnarok. All right, well, hey, that makes sense. Are there going to be three games in this series? Hey, everybody, thanks for sticking through. This one wound up being on the longer side, but I really wanted to dive into the events of the game as it's the most story-heavy installment in the series by far. Only two? Oh, that's awesome. I think that's tight because I was worried there'd be three and that this game would be, like, less cool because they wouldn't kill all the gods because they would save that for a third game. But that's, yeah, that's tight. That is good info. Pog, I'm pogging. Poggin, I'm poggin. What the fuck is this shit? Lavian Bell? I'm trying to run the biggest Smash Sherman ever, no cap? What? This dude's biting my shit! What the fuck is that about? Lavian Bell is a former running back? He's retired, right? He's a former running back. He was a very good running back. Played on a few teams. He was good, right? He was pretty fucking good on the Steelers. Yeah, he had a couple 1,300-yard seasons. That's good. Yeah, he had some good seasons. On the Jet, not so much. On the Jets, not so much. He never beat the Pats. Is that like a real stat that like he has never beaten the 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 Patriots ever? He boxed against Adrian Peterson a month ago. What the fuck? 
Adrian or Lavian Bell knockout. Holy shit. Damn, it takes a lot to get up after that, huh? That man connected. Oh, watch the Ragnarok trailer. That's a good idea. No, that's not it. I literally thought this still of Ben Stiller was the fucking trailer. Is it this? This? Everyone keeps secrets. Sometimes it's the only way to protect the ones we love. I know you. God killer. What is it you want from me? Is it a god of war we came to find? Is that Tyr? You don't really want war. Do you, Kratos? All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. What is it you will not tell me? I can't talk about it, but I just need you to trust me. We follow your every whim. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. Sure about that? Pretender God! For the old father! Death can have me when it hurts me. What do you even know of God's word? In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? No! You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster who kills without cause. I will probably start playing this game Wednesday, and then I think I might do a 24-hour stream then. I got to double-check to see what I got, but that's kind of what I want to do. I just want to start Wednesday, like, night, and then go until fucking Friday if I need to. I can't start tomorrow because when uh, Tuesday I have – um wedding I got to go to but watch the Ben Stiller video I'm not gonna watch an ad for a product I already want to buy this is the other trailer D 
<laughs> I just said I'm not gonna watch an ad for a game I'm already gonna buy, and I'm doing that right now. I said it's so sassily too. I'm not a fucking idiot. Anyway, let's watch this gameplay trailer. Time is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. My story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there, finding out who I am, who Loki is. I will not allow you to pick a fight with God. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want answers. And if those answers lead to war with Asgard? Maybe that's what Mother wants. We do not know what Mother wanted. Well... I recognize that dour expression anywhere. Odin's got tricks up his sleeve we haven't dared to consider. What if there was someone who could help us? You mean Tyr, the old god of war in these lands, who is dead? Well, for a dead man, Odin seemed pretty keen on seeing he wasn't found. Beautiful. If he's Holy out there, shit, so fucking we gotta pretty. find him. Wait, this trailer's Come. way prettier than the other trailer. Ben. What in all yarns be the have been doing? We're trying to stop Ragnarok, to help people. And what if the only way to do that is war? War is not the only way. Stop thinking like a father for a moment and start thinking like a general. No! You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Oh! Are you a calm and reasonable person? Jesus fucking Christ. That... What a creepy thing to say, Thor. <laughs> Everyone talks. I mean, I guess it's a trailer. But every line is like a trailer movie line that you would hear. Destiny doesn't come on its own. You gotta grab life by the horns. That's like the only way that Kratos talks. In moments of crisis, panic does nothing. Do you see what I mean? Harness it. Let it serve you. Are you coming with us? I like how the big ending shot is that he's tall. You'll get your answers soon enough. Well, some of them. Six foot versus five eleven. Dude, I'm excited to play, bro. I'm excited to play. How many people are playing God of War? We got Moon Moon going through it. Yeah. Bet closes when combat strikes. I want to make a bet. Get started. I think he's going to beat the Valkyrie first try. What was a Valkyrie? Because that shit wasn't in the trailer at all. But I know that's like a big part of the game. Secret bosses. What are, what are they? In the game. They're like the furries of the other world. All right, chat, let's take a look at a Pogo Sucks speedrun. <laughs> 